Welcome to this video about bolts, rivets, nails, stitches, screws, and anything that holds anything together. Besides their goal, one thing they have in common is that there's a lot of them. So for a 3D artist, it's incredibly time consuming to paint, let alone model them all by hand. Instead, I'll go over how to use an add-on called Panel Stitcher to generate them procedurally. Starting with a small example use case and then how to control the generation in more detail for bigger projects. In this example I have a wooden crate and I want to place screws like this one along the edges. Now this skill could be doable by hand but it would already be pretty tedious to place all the models. Now to start I select the crate and in the properties panel on the right find create and then panel stitcher which should be there if you've installed the add-on correctly. From here I can choose the screw as instance object and it should all ready update automatically because auto update is enabled if it doesn't just click create mesh i just go to solid mode so it's a bit more responsive and i can change for instance the scale of these screws the spacing between them which also uh, matters for the amount of object that's on each edge for instance if i choose a really small spacing there's going to be a ton of objects on each edge and this one has a lot less. In this case, 0.4 works because it lines up with the texture. One screw for each plank. Now the offset is the offset to each edge. So the larger offset means the elements, in this case the screws, are placed closer to the center of the face, like this. Max connect angle is something you can usually just ignore. The corners, they're either inwards or extended, which has something to do with their rotation. You wouldn't be able to see that right now because the screws are rotationally symmetric, they're round. Uh, we can also just ignore the corners overall. There will be sort of empty spots at each corner. I don't like the look of that, so I'll just choose one of the corner modes at random. I'll skip the limit mode for now. And I've enabled randomized transform, which makes all the screws slightly offset with the random value. This is a bit more realistic. It's in real life, especially for old wooden boxes, the screws would never be aligned perfectly. And now it's ready to render. The compositing. And there it is. Just add that extra bit of detail. For a more complex mesh, you might not want to decorate every single edge. Instead, there's a few ways to control where instances go. These are the limits modes I skipped. The placement can be done automatically by filtering only the edges with strong angles, or by choosing only the faces with the large enough area. These still don't give total control though, so instead you could also use the mark sharp edges method which is already in blender uh, to select which edges are used for the placement of instances so change the limit method to sharp now in edit mode i can select an edge or a few edges just at random right click press mark sharp and now create mesh and as you'll see the instances are only placed around those edges which is complete control over which pattern to use. Now this might take some time, or you might uh, already use these sharp edges for something else, uh, because as I said, it's already in Blender. So there's also the selection method, which allows you to just select faces, uh, mind you faces, not just edges, actually the entire face. And now the elements will be placed around the edges of the face, which also enables, for instance, to just place instances on one side of this edge, which would not be possible if you just select the edge, mark sharp. Now the instances are on both sides. So instead of selection, I can just block out large areas, which want to be covered around the edges only with elements. Now we've come to the last important feature, the project option. 
This uses the geometry of the selected object to generate a pattern of elements, like bolts, for instance, but then projects it over the shape of a different object. You might notice first that self-project is enabled by default. It's best to leave this on when you're not using a specific target. Uh, this is because it helps in cases where elements are hovering slightly above or below the surface. For this example, I'll try to project a triangle pattern on a sphere. I'll need project for this, because the sphere doesn't have the right geometry to even make the triangle patterns. And it is also pretty realistic that your mesh is going to have really high resolution and you don't want to spend the time selecting all these single edges. Instead, I'm going to create an icosphere object. This icosphere is going to define the pattern. I'll set its viewport display to wireframe so we can look through it. And now with the icosphere selected, the object that creates the pattern, uh, don't select the object that's going to project it onto. Select the instance object, which is a pearl in this case, and then disable self-project and choose the projection target. As you can see, it has now followed the edges of the triangle mesh of the icosphere but projected it onto the shape of the sphere. Using this approach, we're not limited by the geometry of the object that is defining the shape. So you could have one object that has a really complex, uh, smooth shape, and then a different object which defines just a low poly pattern for the elements to place. Um, only thing you need to remember is to disable the helper object in render mode. With that, I've covered most of the settings, but only a few use cases. Besides just rivets, you could also make cloth stitching patterns, jewelry, or other types of decoration. I'll leave that to you to find out and be creative. If you've watched this video all the way through, but don't have the add-on yet, the download link is in the description. For extra information, you can read the documentation on Blender Market. Otherwise, just send me a message on there or here in the comments. I hope this was useful, and thanks for watching.